Diego, Marissa Butler. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Marissa, last Friday, White House spokesperson Sarah Huckabee was asked to leave a restaurant in Virginia because of her connection to the Trump administration. Was that right or wrong, and why? Well, I think that we need to focus on the fact that people's political opinions are not uh, indicative on who they are as a person. We all have different opinions, and they are valid in our own ways, and they're based on our own personal experiences. So I think that to judge someone so harshly based off of where their political affiliation lies is unfair, but at the same time there is, uh, business owners do have rights to refuse service to anyone. I just, I personally wouldn't if I was a business owner myself. Comedian Michelle Wolf um, hosted the White House Correspondents Dinner and made um, a lot of ugly comments about Sarah Sanders, and so the White House, you know, was outraged. But they were silent when a White House staffer made uh, the comments about John McCain, well, he's gonna die anyway soon. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel about that? Well, I think, again, it's, it, it's not really about, I, I think that the big issue that we have in our country today is that we're so divided when it comes to our political beliefs, and we assign so much hatred towards the other side, and we need to start uh, seeing each other as people and as, uh, common citizens and not as threat and blue and uh, in general just to be kind to others. I think that's something that our generation has really lost is that empathy towards everyone in our community and so I think that any negative comments, uh, no matter for whatever reasons, they're not necessary. Like your mom always said, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. What, do you, you, what are the contributing factors to um, having lost this kind of act of kindness and, and acceptance of others? I think that social media plays a big role. Um, people are able to hide behind their keyboards or their tablets and smartphones. <coughs> and there's much less of an impact when you're not looking someone in the face um, to say these comments directly to them. So we're able to hide behind that wall. And we are a little bit more brave in what we have to say, but bravery isn't always the best case when it comes to something negative. You were struck by lightning yes. and you're still here. Yes, I am. Um, I, when I was in the sixth grade, I was doing everything your mom told you not to do during a thunderstorm. I was on my phone, on my computer, and had the window wide open, big metal earrings. Lightning came right in, snapped me in the earring. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> wow. And uh, so the only negative effect I had from it is after, ever since then I've had to wear contacts or glasses, uh, so it slightly affected my vision. but. I started doing better in school, so I say it's my superpower. It made me a little bit more smart. <laughs> <laughs> so you studied abroad in London. Yes. And so how do you think that study abroad will help you if you uh, get the title of Miss California? I think it gave me another perspective on what it means to be someone who is coming to a different country. And uh, I think that, especially in today's day and age, where um, immigration is a very hot topic issue, and especially in California, where one out of four immigrants to uh, the United States live in California, it gives me a little bit more of an understanding of their struggle and also how uh, hard it is to acclimate to a new culture. And what I found was the most amazing part of my study abroad experience was how warm and accepting the people of London were towards me. And if it wasn't that way, it would have been a very difficult experience because you're completely uprooting your life and putting yourself in a very brave situation uh, and saying, you know, I want to do this because I want to see what the world has to offer. And we need to see that these people are coming because they love our country, because they want to be here. And I think that that will give me a little bit more of a way to relate to them. And it's such a huge part of our population, so as Miss California, I think it's especially important. Is there another place you'd like to go? Yeah, so I travel a lot um, all through Europe, but my next place I would love to go would be to Asia. Um, and then again, I'd like to go to South America. So I studied Spanish for seven years, but I'm not very good at it. So I want to immerse myself somewhere in South America where I can actually be forced to speak the language and learn about the culture a little bit more. Marissa, I have a two-part question for you. Did you grow up in Maine? I did. And why did you move to California? What brought you to San Diego? Uh, well, you know, I loved growing up in Maine, but when I was in sixth grade, again, I was a pretty formative year for me. That was when I was struck by lightning. Um, I had to do a project on another city within our country. And 72 degrees is my favorite temperature. So 
So I did some research and found that San Diego's average temperature is 72 degrees. So when I was deciding to apply for jobs after college, and I was like, you know what, if I don't do it now, I never will. So I packed up my little two-door car with everything that I owned and drove straight across the country. I didn't even have an apartment lined up until I was in Texas. Uh, so it was just something that I always wanted to do, and I've always wanted to come to California growing up. That was always a dream of mine because, you know, I always felt like I was a big fish in a small pond, and I wanted to see, like, how strong, how far I could swim. I got into a big pond like that. So what's the, the biggest challenge from a girl from down east mm -hmm. traveling all the way to the west coast? Um, the hardest part for me was leaving behind my family. My sister is a single mom and for the first year of my uh, niece's life I was living with her and I was helping raise her and so for me it was leaving her and then especially my father as well who I'm very close with. Um, but. You know, I was able to find such amazing friends out here and such a great support system, so I've been very fortunate, especially within the San Diego organization. So, so the, the difference, go ahead. The difference between you were Miss Maine, um, USA yes. in 2016, <laughs> and how do you feel about, you know, competing now in the Miss America system with the elimination of swimsuit? Obviously, you take very good care of yourself and you're beautiful and physically fit. Um, how do you feel about those changes? Well, I'm actually excited for it because, you know, I got to have a uh, experience where I did get to go to the international level with a swimsuit portion. And now I get to do what I always love doing. The interview part has always been my favorite. And so be able to speak in front of the audience and to let them get to know me, let them see <coughs> what you guys all see. That's something I'm really excited about. As far as swimsuit specifically, I have my best friend who suffered from body dysmorphia. She's the most amazing person I've ever met. She's the person who is the inspiration for my platform. She has the most, she gives back to the community every single day. And she always was a little bit hesitant of going into the Miss America system because she, the swimsuit portion was something that was unhealthy for her. Um, and now that it's eliminated, it will let women who are amazing, such as my best friend, compete. And I think those are the people who are really going to be the best title holders because it's not about walking across the stage in a swimsuit, it's about the impact you leave on people. So being from Maine and transitioning to San Diego, um, you've probably seen a lot of the state. Um, tell me what you know about agriculture and what it means to the state of California. Well, uh, California is the breadbasket of the United States and my job actually, we are specialized in natural resource investing is brought global. So I had to learn a lot about agriculture, a lot about fertilizers, and so I do know the huge impact that it has. Um, and I think that it's really important that we encourage um, people in California to continue it because uh, hunger is such a huge issue in our country. And so if we are able to say this is something important and honor that, um, I think that you know that, that is really going to be the main focus um, as my time is Miss California as well. How will you um, present your platform to different age groups? You'll be speaking to co um, college age students, mm -hmm. high school sco students, elementary students. So how do you um, tailor your platform presentation to the different age groups? Well, the amazing thing about volunteering is that there are so many different ways you can get involved. For the young kids, we might start with beach cleanup or talking about just getting out there and getting to know your community and then for people who are a little bit older, we might be able to talk about uh, being mentors and also bringing people along. I think that the biggest part of my platform is not just volunteering, but encouraging others to come along with you. So when I go out and do my service projects in San Diego, I can write along all the girls who are the local contestants. And almost every single one of my events that I've come to, I've had at least two or three of the girls I competed with who have come out to support me and our community. And it's about just creating a community that cares about our community. Uh, like I said, our community is so based online nowadays, and I just want to really take that focus and shift it to this is a real, physical, tangible world, and that is what is important. And our time is almost up. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before you leave? Yes. Well, as you can see from my resume, I've had a very eclectic uh, interests, um, but at the base of it all is just someone who really wants to make a difference in this world. And if you give me the opportunity to do so as Miss California, I promise you I will work, work so hard the entire year and really try to make a real difference in our community right here in California.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, and we'll see you tonight. Thank you.